and good morning. My name is Abby and this is Craft Studio. And today I have a lot of crafts to share with you. Um, still getting over a cold, so please excuse my um, voice. But anyway, if I don't do it now, it's not going to get done. So <laughs> let's just jump right in. Um, first, I wanted to talk to you about scraps in your sewing, uh, whenever you're sewing. Um, to save your scraps, I've got a bag full, <laughs> if you can see that, and um, a lot of people throw their scraps away, uh, but I am here to tell you to save them. They are very, very useful. Um, you can even save scraps of thread, uh, scraps of batting or fusible fleece. Um, just any type of scrap, save them because they are great for stuffing. When you stuff things, they are great for stuffing and I will show you why in just a minute. <laughs> so grab yourself a cup of coffee or hot chocolate or tea or soda, whatever you want to drink and let's get started. I forgot my coffee so I'm going to go grab that right now and I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm back now. I've got my coffee. <laughs> Very good. Okay, perfect actually. It's not too hot, not too cold. <laughs> it is a chilly fall morning this morning, and um, we've had a little sickness in our family. Um, we had some sinus um, virus flu type thing, and then got the stomach virus. It was yucky. <laughs> We're, we're on the mend. We're on the mend. Praise the Lord. So, got us through all that. That was tough. All of us being sick at once. If you've ever <laughs> had your family all sick at once, that is difficult because nobody can take care of anybody else because they're all sick. <laughs> so anyway, all right, let's get over that. First of all, I wanted to talk to you about saving your sewing scraps and how you can use it um, for stuffing. Um, I've been sewing a lot because um, when you're stuck at home and you have nothing else to do sewing um, get your mind off <laughs> things and can be an outlet for frustration <laughs> but anyway I've been making pumpkins um, this was not the first pumpkin I made this was actually the second pumpkin that I made um, and I will link the tutorial down below in the description box if you're interested it's by Virginia Lindsay from Ginger Cakes ginger cake pattern and designs I've used her many times before I love her tutorials but um, and I will um, <laughs> put in a picture of the first pumpkin I made I actually gifted it to my mom um, so anyway but I will when in when I do my editing I'll post a picture of it but this was the second one I made and I really like blues and greens um, so who says the pumpkin has to be orange. No one says that. There's no rule. So, <laughs> especially when it's a fabric pumpkin. But anyway, so I just loved using these sca scraps of fabric. <clears throat> it's a little wonky on the bottom. I'm not sure why. But, um, and then the stem is just felt, rolled up felt. And then the leaf, I actually, instead of using felt like she did in the tutorial, I just took two pieces of fabric, I put some fusible fleece in the middle, and then I just used embroidery floss, if you can see that, to go all the way around the edge of the leaf. And I think that gave it a really, I like the touch of the um, <clears throat> homemadeness, if, if you will. Sorry, my pumpkin's a little dusty. I also added this little strip of lace, oops, <laughs> lace right there here um, I had some lace that I found in a bag of kind of crafting scraps at um, Goodwill and I thought it looked really pretty on that solid fabric so I did that so anyway I stuffed this pumpkin with the polyfill just something like this polyfill Okay, just normal batting, it's polyester, and that's fine, and it works fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it does get expensive, especially if you're making lots of things, which 
I have been recently and I plan to make more for Christmas. I'm going to be making dolls and um, some maybe little Christmas trees for Christmas. So anyway, but as you can see, um, it's kind of lumpy. It's um, especially on this side seems to be higher than this side. And I didn't stuff it as full as I could have. Um, but I will show you the contrast when you are using scraps of fabric. This is another pumpkin I made. Now this was using a different tutorial. This was from um, Positively Splendid uh, by Amy and she has a blog and I think she has videos too but I will link it down below. This was the medium sized pumpkin. She has them in three different sizes and um, so it's it's made just a little bit differently but I filled this and you can see it's much more fuller um, it's firm <laughs> uh, you can't feel that because you're not here with me but it is I'm telling you take my word for it and it's heavier um, now in the bottom of this pumpkin I did put inside before I stitched it up I put made a little pouch and filled it with rice and that helps give it some weight so it's not real light and just can you know blow around or fall off real easy she did not do that in her video but I, I wanted to do it um, just to give it some more stability um, so but in this one I didn't have to do that because with all the different kinds of fabric and the batting and the fusible fleece it just gives it more weight I even have scraps of ribbon in here scraps of thread um, but it just, it really, and it, ooh, sorry, huh, my light just fell. Um, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, it just, the, it's, it's denser, um, and it holds its shape and it's, it's actually kind of heavy. So I really like this better. Um, and I will, like I said, I will share the tutorial of how she made this or the tutorial for this pumpkin down below if you're interested. <clears throat> and I'm going to make more. This is the just the, the first one I made, and I tied a little bow at the top. She uses, in her tutorial, she uses a cinnamon stick as the stem, and she puts a bow and wraps embroidery floss around it to kind of tighten it. I didn't want to do all that. I thought it looked fine just the way it is. I didn't want to do all that. But And I shared all these also in our face group, Facebook group if you're a part of that. Um, in craft studio on Facebook so I shared all these links in there as well so if you're interested they're there also if you're there <laughs> if not come join us <laughs> okay another pumpkin I made and I got this idea from um, Sandra Sandra from Cherry Heart uh, here on YouTube and she posted a video I think it was last week and she made these flat pumpkins now mine is a lot different from hers, but I just took the idea basically and ran with it. But um, yeah, she showed what she did and I just pieced these scraps together and I did it, yes, to match this pumpkin. I wanted matching pumpkin. So I had fabric left over, so I made this and I added the stem and then I did some stitching on the back quilting, but I don't know if it'll show up in the camera or not. Oh well. But anyway, I am using this actually not as a hot pad, but I'm using it as kind of like a hold a hot bowl of soup or a cup of tea or a hot plate right out of the microwave. I've been using it for that and I really like it. And I've made an I made another one for my mom and I'll post a picture somewhere in here uh, when I do my editing, but I made hers to match her pumpkin. So anyway, I've been having a blast making pumpkins if you can't already tell. So yeah, I, and I'm going to make more because I still have plenty more fabric. I'm just using scraps. Um, and how I made that flat pumpkin, um, <clears throat> I basically used an old grocery bag and I cut I just drew a pumpkin uh, or traced it you know and then cut it out um, and I made a mirror, mirror image one this I found out though is not big enough 
it's not big enough for the size that I wanted because I did not allow for seam seam allowance. Your your project is always going to be smaller because once you put it together and you sew it around, it's going to be smaller. And the stem didn't work either. It was way, way, way too small. Um, once you sew around both sides and then turn it inside out, I couldn't do it. I had to cut it off and put the felt in. I ended up putting the felt in and just stitching it in. <laughs> yeah. So, oh well, that's okay. For, for next time, I know better. So that was fun. And then also from Positively Splendid, um, she had a leaf template, which I used to make this. And um, she has three different sizes, but they're over there. Three different sizes of leaves. Oops, sorry. These leaves. This is the large, I believe. And then the medium and small are right here. And I just took embroidery floss and I went all around them and uh, made this little, it's not a pot holder. I think I'm actually gonna use this as a crafting um, tote or something. Um, but I used the buttons on there, that was her idea, and then stitched around it. And I also used embroidery floss, if you can see right there. Never done that before, that was from Sandra, from her video. Go watch her video, that was such a nice video. It was so relaxing. She has beautiful music. She takes her dog on a walk. And it's just really pretty how she does that. But anyway, um, I think what I'm going to do, I can put um, some scissors on this hook. Maybe put my needles in the felt. And uh, make this like a little embroidery type caddy or something. I don't know. That's my idea anyway. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun putting that together. And if you hadn't noticed, <laughs> it matches. Uh... Uh, yes, I've gone a little wild here on the fall sewing, but that's okay. So the other two things that I sewed, um, or I've been working on, are these hanging um, dish towels. And I'll show you that in just a minute. I made these quite a bit last year at Christmas time also. But I made these. <clears throat> and this pattern is from Momtastic. It's on her blog. She shows exactly how to do it. Um, I did embellish. I put some lace on the bottom here. And instead of doing a snap for the top, which is what I normally do, I used Velcro this time. And you're supposed to use uh, sew on a button on the front. But after I put the Velcro on, because it's the sticky Velcro, I didn't sew it on. Yeah, I couldn't get the needle through there. It was too sticky. So anyway, it's fine. It hangs fine. I used this cute little sewing machine fabric for this one, and then I found this pretty apple fabric for that one. And I did put some fusible fleece in these just to see how it held up a little bit better. Usually I just use two pieces of fabric, but I wanted to see how it would... Um, I just wanted to kind of experiment to see if I like the batting in there or not. I do because it looks fuller, but it's, it's, um, I don't know. It's a little bit more difficult to sew over. I kind of miss the stitching on the back there. So I don't know. I'm kind of 50 50 on it. <laughs> but anyway, so that's two other things I made. Got my little ironing board here. I'm in my dining room because my yarn room is kind of full right now. We've been move moving stuff around the house and um, so there's some stuff we had to move into my yarn room. So yeah, it's kind of full right now. Um, okay, what can I share? Oh, um, I don't have a finished object. That's all in sewing. I don't have a finished object in crochet, but I have some whips to share. I've been working on my... Do I have the pattern? I don't think I have the pattern. I ha I do have some books um, books to share with you that I did not get to share in my last video. So I will, excuse me, so I will share that now. <clears throat> but I've been working on some more squares for my chimney. What is it? Is it the chimney sweep afghan? I think that's what it's called. Anyway, if you remember, 
I've been working on this was this is my autumnal afghan for my family that I was working on and I finished this block my other blocks I kind of did all different colors or not all different colors but different um, um, different color variations and then I did this one and I really liked this one the best so I've decided the whole afghan is going to be in this color sequence I'm not going to do any other color sequence this one is my favorite so I've been working on that just making more and more blocks of this color sequence I don't know why it caught my eye why I like it so much but I do and so I've been doing them all on this so I have I have made quite a few they go quick I just sit in my chair and just doodle -doo 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 -doo. but I have to weave in all the ends and as you can see I haven't done that because I hate weaving in these ends they're very annoying um, I'm just gonna be honest it's really hard to weave in these ends and so I've been procrastinating on that so okay <laughs> just, does anybody like to weave in ends? I, I would love to hear if you do. Usually I don't mind too much, but this one is really frustrating. Okay, I found another afghan. Um, and I don't know if I shared about this last time. I don't think I did. This is the Log Cabin Crocheted Afghan. And I found it in one of my vintage books from our church library. And I just thought that was so beautiful and I wanted to try it. I had never tried anything. I, I tried the Attic 24 and it was similar to this, but um, I wanted to try it. And it is different as far as the, um, the stitches, how they're put together. So I made this first block um, and I made this with Hirschner's worsted weight yarn. Um, the Attic 24 uses the double knit and a smaller hook, but this one I really like. I really like how she, um, how the pattern is written, and I learned I learned quite a bit uh, from this. But I really, honestly, didn't care for the colors, mostly the yellow and the then the turquoise. I really didn't like those. I really wanted more darker tones, so <clears throat> I ordered some yarn. <laughs> so I could start a different block now this one looks a little messy I'm sorry for all the ends but and as you can see I had to stop there but um, I started with some different uh, colors more darker colors um, and I will share them um, let's see this is eggplant this is midnight I did get this blush I think this is blush yeah and then I got a brown which I believe was espresso and then is there another color I got uh, I'll have to put it on the screen later when I do my editing because I can't remember it was this brown this is espresso I believe and there was a is this no, okay. I feel like I'm missing something. Anyway, <clears throat> the other colors I already had. This one and the the these two, I already had those. They came in a, a different yarn pack. But anyway, um, yeah, so I just wanted the, the Log Cabin Afghan, if you don't know about it, it's basically darks on this corner, lights on this corner, and you always have a red center. So anyway, um yeah so I think that's what I'm gonna be doing but it is uh, oh I'm holding it backwards I am so sorry that's why it looks weird <laughs> I was holding it backwards I am so sorry that's yeah I can mm, this looks a little better but yeah the ends are not weaved in but anyway I think it will be beautiful um, I was really trying to follow if you can see I was trying to follow the same color um, the same colors that they used it was in a yarn that is now discontinued so I could not get what they had 
but I just tried to pick out similar colors because I really like the color scheme in this afghan. So that's... But I also wanted to use the yarn that was in my stash. I did not want to have to go buy more yarn, <laughs> um, but I simply did not have the right colors um, in the right yarn. So what are you going to do? <laughs> But I did get this on sale from Hershner's. It was on sale, so I'm proud of that. Okay, so that's my two crochet whips. I really not, I really have not been working on anything else because um, I've been sewing a lot and then everyone's been sick. Um, <clears throat> I did, however, um, I do have some books to share with you. And then also another book I found in our church library um, is this book all about cross stitch and I've been looking through that and I'm really excited I want to try that um, just to kind of learn more about it and um, I don't know I haven't tried it yet but I'm really getting into the embroidery so I'd really like to learn something else about um, this type of thing so that's a book, and this is by Better Homes and Gardens. Um, let me see. It was in 1984. So it's a nice vintage book. You know I love vintage books. And then these other two books I wanted to share in my last video and didn't get to. This is Little Bears to Knit and Crochet. This is by Val Pierce. And I had one of her books. It was about granny squares. And, um, um... I really liked it I, I so I looked up other titles that she had done and I found this and I got it really really cheap on Amazon and uh, it's a used book um, and usually you can get if you search you can get um, used books with free shipping shipping is really expensive right now but anyway this has lots of cute little bears and accessories and little I mean, all these different things to make. Look at that. So cute. So I can't wait to get started on those. And then she also had this title, which was Knitting Rabbits. And so I picked that up and has lots of cute little things. Even this carrot. Look at the carrot. <laughs> I thought that was adorable. Um, oh yeah, look at all the different bears on there. And it has all their little accessories, shoes, hats, bags. Um, I mean, there's just all, it's really, really cute. Okay, so that's that. Um, also, um, Francine is my vintage, not vintage, my antique sewing machine, treadle sewing machine, 96 years old. I brought her home. Um, <clears throat> yes, she is sitting right over there and I practiced sewing with her and my brother, as I said before, he's going to do a video for me. Final reveal video here at home. It's me using it and it will show, you know, all the moving parts and um, so look forward to that. That is coming soon. Um, I'm very excited about that to show you guys and to sew with it. I've been watching videos on YouTube of learning how to sew with it, learning about how to wind the bobbin, um, and how to, I had to watch a video on how to thread it, and anyway, just a lot, but I'm really excited, so I think that's all I have to share with you. So anyway, okay, take care, God bless, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Happy crafting.